Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As expected, Apple today released all the updates that we were kind of missing after the sudden iOS update that was released this weekend. Now with that, we also got a new version of OS X, watchOS and tvOS, where tvOS also was released earlier this week. But what we really got is all the security details. Apple released now the iOS security details that were originally missing. There was also a Safari update and so far there are no details available for that. Tried something a little bit different today with our diary about this. I just actually made this live. If you saw the diary earlier, you may not have seen this. And that's sort of comparing macOS, iOS, tvOS and watchOS as far as the different patches overlap. Well, uh, not quite unexpected. The overlap is quite big. Most, I would say more than half of the patches or vulnerabilities do apply to all four operating systems. Somewhat of note is that the Mac OS update does include the passwordless root account fix. There has been a problem where people updated to the last version of macOS after applying the patch, which kind of undid the patch again. So now you have a proper new version of macOS that you can update to that avoids this problem. Also for everything but macOS, there are also patches for the crack vulnerability again. It only affects certain pieces of hardware. So apparently for those, they hadn't quite the patch ready for earlier versions, there were earlier releases that were supposed to fix this vulnerability. We have seen this similarly from other vendors like Microsoft and Google, where they have released multiple patches for this crack vulnerability. Other than that, this looks actually like a little bit uh, smaller patch than what we had in the past. I counted uh, 26 uh, different vulnerabilities that are being addressed uh, this week. But again, this doesn't count the Safari vulnerabilities. We don't have any details there. And it's not uncommon for Safari with WebKit to double the total vulnerability count. And then another issue that came up earlier today, and that's something that sort of keeps coming up periodically. So we usually don't write every single time about it, but occasionally it does see me do need to remind people that reverse DNS is not really trustworthy. The reason this came up was that a reader did a reverse lookup on an IP address of a Vietnamese ISP and it reverse resolved to a local host. This is in this particular case either done just because well they didn't bother to really properly configure reverse DNS or they're trying to bypass some spam filters. And this is where our reader here sort of noticed it in their spam logs. The problem of course is if you are doing any kind of security using reverse DNS, the only way you can do that sort of halfway secure is if reverse and forward DNS are matching. So what you need to do is first take the IP address, get the host name that is associated via pointer record with that IP address, and then resolve that host name again and see if you end up at the original IP address. That actually most of the time fails even if the reverse DNS was not malicious. But the point really is that if you do authentication, you have to sort of uh, do that extra work to make sure that the attacker isn't just setting up a reverse resolution for an IP address that they own. OpenSSH, for example, does have the option to do some access control using host names. But first of all, this is done in addition to keys. And then also OpenSSH does insist on forward and reverse lookups matching. 
And then we have yet another Bitcoin or cryptocurrency exchange that has been compromised. This time it was NiceHash and it looks like the attacker got away with about 4,700 Bitcoins, which does approximately translate to 64 million US dollars. No details yet. There's a brief press release from NiceHash where it looks like uh, they don't necessarily know what happened exactly. Exactly. They just recommend that users do change their passwords. It may also be a good idea to move any cryptocurrencies elsewhere. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks and for listening. If uh, you would like to hear more from me, I actually have two webcasts scheduled, one tomorrow on Thursday and one on Friday. First one is by RSA as part of the RSA conference. And it will be Mike Asante at SCOTUS, Alan Poller and myself, sort of a follow up on the panel we are doing each year. The second one will be on Friday and and uh, it will cover the recent changes in the OWASP top 10. I'll have links to these webcasts in the show notes. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.